welcome to my pediatric emergency cases for ERPM exam. This is the today's scenario you will be given by the examiner. Listen carefully. Today is your casualty day and you are clocking a patient, 5 years old, who came with history of fever for one day with dengue NS1 positive with full blood count platelet 215. Meanwhile, corner of your ward you hear strange voice, you hear a strange cough, sounds like a barking cough. When you turn that side, you see baby girl who's around 3 years standing there and nurse doing the admission of that patient. That patient seems to be little dyspneic. When you hear this barking sort of cough, what is the diagnosis comes to your mind? What is your answer? Your answer should be it is viral croup or laryngotracheobronchitis or laryngotracheitis. This is the unique sort of cough that we are calling. It is a barking cough that is unique for laryngotracheitis or laryngotracheobronchitis or viral croup. Then your examiner might ask you, when you turn that side, you see this patient little distinct and still coughing with sort of a barking cough. Will you go ahead with Clark in this dengue patient who's having NS1 positive or will you attend that patient? Now he wants to see your little triage skills. So he's uh, giving you a case to triage this. Your answer should be, I will attend this patient who's having barking cough that I'm thinking of viral croup with having respiratory distress other than Clark in this patient. He will ask why? Because that patient is already having respiratory distress which need emergency intervention therefore and this patient I'm clocking who's having dengue NS1 positive still he's having one day of fever with platelet count 215 and he's clinically stable so therefore I would prefer to attend that case then his question will be what are the clinical history and physical signs that you will look for to support your diagnosis of viral croup? Your answer should be, I will ask the age of the patient. Viral croup usually present with 6 months to 5 years of age. Then I will ask whether this illness preceded with coryzal like illness and the weather condition was suitable for like winter sort of weather condition. Then the physical signs I will look into whether the patient is having hoarsening of voice, inspiratory stride, mild or no respiratory distress. Those are the physical signs I will look for to support my diagnosis of viral croup. Alright, with this, can you tell me what will be your management further? I will take this patient to emergency room in my ward and then I will assess airway breathing circulation. Your examiner may intervene saying in assessing of circulation would you like to cannulate this patient? Your answer should be never. Why is that? You are not doing any upsetting of the child since child circulation is not compromised. It is respiratory system which is mainly compromised I would not upset, unnecessarily upset this child or carry on any distracting maneuvers to upset the child which will lead to enhance the problem further, obstructing his airway. Now examiner will ask you next, alright your diagnosis is viral croup is confirmed now. How can you differentiate, moderate viral croup from stage of severe viral croup. Your answer should be if it's moderate he may have respiratory distress or no respiratory distress with mild recessions with reduced airway but airway is easily audible. If it's severe he may have alteration of consciousness level. In moderate croup you will not get alteration of consciousness but in severe you will get alteration of consciousness with moderate to mark respiratory recessions with reduced airway and this airway is not audible easily those are the demarcation that you will 
differentiate from moderate croup to the stage of severe croup. Then your examiner may ask, all right, if this is moderate croup, what you will do? What will your management should be? First of all, you need to tell you will contact your senior. You will ask your nurse to contact your senior and let him know you are dealing with the, such a patient in the ward at the moment. Meanwhile, you should carry out your management. What is your management? First of all, the mainstay should be you should not upset the child or carry out any manoeuvres which upset the child to further enhance the obstruction of his airway such as you should not use the face mask to give oxygen if the child is getting upset with that or you should never use the tongue depressor in that case. The treatment you can use here is dexamethasone. Dexamethasone you can use 0.6 mg per kg up to 8 mg orally. If child is not taken orally, you can nebulize the child with butanide 2 mg. The dexamethasone dose that I remember 0.6 mg per kg till 8 mg, my memory stimulator is I am getting maximum flow of patient in my private practice from 6 to 8. So I remember 0.6 mg per kg till 8. I suggest you to have a unique memory stimulator to remember these doses, those values. It will be helpful in such a way. Alright, you have given this oral dexamethasone and child is not getting better. He is getting increased respiratory rate, moderate to marked recessions with alterating of his consciousness level. What is this suggesting of? Your answer should be this is suggesting of severe stage of croup and your management should be, your manager should be immediately contact your immediate senior including your pediatric registrar, senior registrar in pediatric ICU and anesthetist and ENT surgeon. Alright, since you have called them, you have called your senior registrar, registrar, anesthetist and ENT surgeon, all of them, mean while they come, what you can go ahead with treatment. You can nebulize this child with adrenaline, 1 in 1000 solution, 0.5 ml per kg. You can go up to 5 milliliters that you will have to remember. These are the treatment for acute croup from moderate to severe stages. You will have to remember these simple steps and you will have to be having safe hand in the ward. Remember how to triage the patient and do carry out this treatment accordingly. That is from my end. I wish you good luck in your exams. Stay with me for the emergency pediatric cases as well as other topics in future. Subscribe my channel. If you like anything to clarify, you just comment. Share to be selfless on knowledge. Thank you very much.